Hello, Elizabeth here, and today I'm going to show you how I made this pair of rhinestone Crocs. I used a range of different colors and sizes of rhinestones, but all of them have either a silvery tone or a blue tone, and they remind me of mermaids, and I love them. Even the strap has a little bit of sparkles so that they dazzle from all angles. I'm gonna walk you through the process from start to finish. Let's do it! These are not name brand Crocs, they are knockoffs from a store we have in Canada called Giant Tiger, and I think they were like $15. For this project, I am using E6000 glue, which is toxic and definitely a lot more dangerous to use than the Gemtac glue that I usually use in my rhinestone videos. The packaging explains that the fumes are harmful and can irritate skin, and that it should be used in a well-ventilated area. I started this project in my home with the windows open and found that even that wasn't quite enough ventilation, so I ended up doing the rest of the project outdoors. I chose this glue because it's extremely strong and it's supposed to be the best choice for shoes, but it does have a bit of a bad reputation in the rhinestone community for its toxicity, so just a heads up, you can use this at your own risk. Once I moved outside, I didn't notice the fumes at all. I'm going to be rhinestoning the flat space on the front of the shoe around the holes and later I'll be doing the straps as well. I started by sanding that area to rough up the surface which will help the glue and the rhinestones to adhere better. I'm being careful not to go past the edges with the sandpaper. I did this with both shoes and once the whole surface was nice and rough, I gave it a wipe with some rubbing alcohol to remove the dust and any other dirt or oil that could be on the surface. For the rhinestones, I'm using a variety of sizes in different shades of blue and silver, mostly from this variety pack as well as some extra SS8 and SS16 Crystal AB rhinestones. I will be using a wax pencil to pick up and place the rhinestones, and I got all of these on Sheen. The links are in the description. I started with a thin layer of glue around the outside edge of the shoe and used the SS16 Crystal AB rhinestones to create an outline. When I got to these narrow corners, I used some of the SS8 rhinestones to fill in that little gap so that everything would fit nicely. I continued all the way around the shoe until it was fully outlined, and then did the same thing on the other shoe. Next, I surrounded each of the holes with SS8 rhinestones. The nozzle of the E6000 glue is a little bit thick for this. In a few minutes, you'll see me switch to applying the glue with toothpicks, and if I did it over again, I would definitely use a toothpick for this part as well. But it still turned out fine, it just would have made things easier for me. I surrounded every hole on both crocs with the SS8 rhinestones and this is what they looked like. Next, I started adding in the rest of the rhinestone colors. I went back around each hole of the crocs again, this time using the varying sizes and shades of blue and silver from the variety pack. I tried to make them as balanced as possible by doing a dark blue and then a big silver and then a light blue and then a small silver. Not necessarily following a pattern, but just trying to get the variety as spread out as possible. Then for each hole, I followed the same idea, but tried to shift which spot the dark blue started in so that the holes all looked different even though the patterns were pretty much the same, if that makes sense. So once I got all of those finished, it looked like this, which is kind of cool, they kind of look like flowers. But there is so much left unsparkly, so we are not done yet. Next, I worked my way out from the rhinestones surrounding the holes to fill in the space in between the holes. This is where I decided it was time to start using a toothpick to apply the glue because there are some very tight spaces to work into here. 
To do this, I squeezed some glue onto a toothpick and spread it out in a small area. Because my blue stones are a bit limited, I tried to stick to mostly silver stones for this part and only added the occasional blue stone just to keep it looking balanced. You want to fill in the gaps as tightly as possible, but it's okay for there to be a tiny bit of space between the stones if it's not a perfect fit. The E6000 glue dries pretty quickly, definitely much quicker than Gemtac, so it's not super forgiving. But if it hasn't been sitting for too long, you should still be able to pry off a stone with a toothpick if you need to rearrange something. I would compare the texture to hot glue. You can pick and peel at it if you need to, but once it has dried for the full 24 to 48 hours, it is super strong. Once I had all the spaces between the holes filled in, I did the same thing on the other shoe. Then I kept working my way to the outside edge of the shoe, filling the space up to the outline I did at the start. I still kept it very heavy on the silver stones, just making sure to add some blue ones here and there so that everything would look balanced. Once you meet the outside edge, it can be a little tricky to fill in the gaps. But by this point, you should be pretty familiar with the sizes of the stones you're using and what will fit in which spaces. It gets easier as you go, so hopefully you won't have to do too much rearranging to make everything fit. Once I finished working my way to the outer edges, the crocs looked like this, with just that gap at the top remaining. The narrow corners are the trickiest, so I recommend filling both of those in and working your way into the middle. Having the SS8 crystals really helped me when it came to the tiny gaps that no other stones would fit in, so I'd suggest having at least one color in a smaller size to fill in those tricky bits but a little bit of space won't be noticeable in the grand scheme of things, especially if the color of the crocs matches the colors of the stones you're using. If you're a perfectionist like me, you might arrange and rearrange and rearrange again to find the perfect fit when closing in those edges, but try not to go too crazy over it. Everything will be sparkly and beautiful when it's done. I made sure to scatter enough blue stones through this top section to keep everything balanced. Closing in this final gap is very satisfying. And this is what it looked like when the whole top surface was filled in. Finally, I decided the straps needed some sparkle as well. And for those, I used only SS8 stones because it's a pretty narrow little surface and I just thought it would look nice if it was all uniform. First, I outlined the edge just like we did at the beginning. Next, I worked my way from the outer edges into the middle. And this is going to depend on your stones and the crocs you're using, but I found they fit best almost like a zipper. So the filler stones in this narrow section were interlocked, but not side by side. Then when I got up to the wider section, I was able to do more of a honeycomb pattern and make each row sit in the spaces between the stones in the previous row. Where they met in the middle got a little bit wonky, but I still think it turned out beautifully. And here is the final result. They are mind-blowingly sparkly. Bailey here is blind and cannot see the Crocs, but she gave them a sniff test and approved, so what else can you ask for? I can't wait to wear these to regular places like the grocery store and dazzle my way through the aisles. You can clean these just like a rhinestone tumbler. I have a video tutorial for that which shows you how to use dish soap and a nail brush to scrub in between the stones and get them nice and shiny. You can follow that same method for your Crocs whenever they need a fresh bedazzling. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment letting me know what you would like to see next. See you later.